Back in 1964, when the Honeycombs reached number one with the song Have I the Right, one of the things that caught people's attention was the fact that the band featured a female drummer, something very unusual at the time. The drummer's name was Honey Lantry. The song became a massive hit. Apart from reaching number one on the British charts, it was also number one in Canada and Australia, and it reached number five in the States. The Honeycombs failed to replicate the success of their debut single, but for a brief period of time, they appeared on television shows from all over the world and they were constantly featured in British music papers. Not surprisingly, Honey Lantry became the focal point of interest in the band. At a time when men thought women should only sing in bands, many people dismissed her as a gimmick or a visual novelty. Honey, is this the first record you've made? Yes, it is the first. It must yeah. be exhausting work playing those drums. Not really, no. What's it like being surrounded by four men then? Oh, they're all right. I look after them. You know, I do their hair for them, make their tea. In an interview several years later, Honey Lantry remembered. When I used to sit there and rehearse, I didn't think about the... I didn't think... I didn't think, gosh, I'm doing this and I'm a girl. Um, it was only when I actually went to play um, in a pub called the Mild Maid Tavern at Hackney with the band that it sort of dawned on me, gosh, everyone's looking at me. Uh, but And that's when I thought, you know, this hasn't been done before. There hasn't been many girl drums. Um, but yes, my family, were, my, my parents pushed me all the way. In my parents, they are very supportive. In September 1964, when the Honeycombs were at their peak in popularity, Honey Lantry spoke to the melody maker about her experience as a female drummer in a pop band. And she spoke out against the prejudice and criticism she was facing. Journalist Ray Coleman wrote, Life has been particularly frenzied for drummer Honey Lantry since the Honeycombs topped the chart. The 21-year-old brunette has come in for some sharp blasts at criticism in several ways. They have ranged from the description of her playing as being the result of amplified boots, through straightforward attacks on her ability, to the common charge that she's merely a gimmick in the male-dominated beat world. Miss Lantry is rather disturbed about the whole affair, the drummer said. All I ask from the critics really, is that they stop saying these things about me just because I'm a girl. I just want to be judged on what I play. I've been playing a few years. It all started when I worked in Martin Murray's hairdressing shop, about 15 months ago. I was a bit doubtful about joining the group at first but I was talked into it. I promise you it wasn't a gimmick. And anyway, why shouldn't a girl be allowed to be a drummer? I don't see why people are so narrow-minded about it. It's not up to me to say anything to the people who have criticized my drumming but all I can tell you is that I enjoy doing it, and the boys seem quite happy with it. I have come to terms with the critics and now the only thing to do is accept it. It's a bit upsetting but there's nothing I can do about it. How are the fans reacting to the sight of a girl seated behind the drums? Is Honey attracting screams in the ballrooms? Yes, and it's a bit nerve-wracking. Last week I was actually dragged off the stage, that was down in Cornwall. Some boys clambered on the stage and pulled me off. You expect this sort of thing but it's still terrifying. The only thing for me to do, is keep my head. They said that I was a gimmick, but I wasn't a gimmick. But I was a gimmick, I suppose, in respect that I was a girl drummer, so look upon it as a gimmick. But I played on everything. I played on all, um, played on every single track that we ever recorded. Honey Lantry was an inspiration to many girls who wanted to play drums and the letters section of many magazines were filled with letters by readers who were inspired to follow Lantry's example. A reader called Miss E. Crawshaw sent a letter to Rave magazine. I'm 17 and I play drums. Have done for years. I would have joined a beat group before but I thought it would be too much of a gimmick. But after seeing Megan Davis and Honey Lantry succeed, I think I'll get in on the act. A female drummer from Chicago called Maureen Maloney also sent a letter to Rave magazine and wrote about a disappointing meeting with Ringo Starr. The reader wrote, If Honey Lantry thinks she's got problems as a girl drummer because she wears slacks, she ought to consider herself lucky. How would she like to have Ringo tell her face to face that he doesn't like girl drummers? I'm a girl drummer and it happened to me. I thought I'd die right there and then. Yet I'm still drumming and proud of it. Have I the Right was produced by genius British producer Joe Meek. 
Meek was one of the first independent producers in Britain. Joe Meek now produces recording tapes only, leaving the big record companies to make and distribute his records. But even here, he has his problems. Again, I met with a lot of difficulties because I kept coming up with hits and uh, the A&R men and different people uh, tied to these major companies were inclined to be a little bit envious and um, complained about the plugs my records were getting. And uh, uh, so I had a, I have to watch these people like a hawk. The song featured all the elements that defined Joe Meek's signature sound, strong reverb and echo effects, massive overdriving, and sped up tapes which gave the instruments and the vocals an almost otherworldly sound. The single was recorded at Joe Meek's apartment in London, which he used as a recording studio. Honey Lantry's prominent drum part during the chorus was enhanced by having the members of the group stamp their feet on the wooden stairs that lead to Meek's studio. The single became the third Joe Meek production to reach number one. It was also the last. The arrival of bands like the Beatles or the Stones on the music scene marked the beginning of a new era. The new breed of British bands preferred a more organic and direct sound. And Joe Meek's style of production would soon be considered outdated. In an interview several years later, John Layton, whose song Johnny Remember Me became the first Joe Meek production to reach number one in 1960, remembered the changing times. The very last tour I did was in 1964, a virtually unknown group called the Rolling Stones closed the first half and it was a six-week tour and as the, as the tour progressed I sort of noticed that uh, this strange group was getting quite a lot of uh, attention and applause so we, we moved them up to the second half to the slot before me and the last week was quite traumatic it was a very difficult act for me to follow and I think the writing was on the wall at the end of that tour with the exception of That's The Way, which managed to reach a very decent number 12 on the charts, the rest of the Honeycomb singles either failed to chart or stalled at the bottom of the top 40. Have I The Right became a massive hit when the Beatles and the Stones were already big stars in Britain. But it was the last time that a single produced by Joe Meek managed to have a big impact on the charts. That's The Way featured Honey Lantry sharing the lead vocal spot with the Honeycomb's lead singer Dennis Dell. The Honeycomb second album, called All Systems Go, also offered Honey Lantry singing a soulful pop ballad called Something I Got To Tell You. The song was never released as a single, but it confirmed her talents as a vocalist. The band struggled to find success throughout most of 1965 and 1966. And lead singer Dennis Dell left the band along with two other members. The group re-emerged as the new Honeycombs in 1967, and released their final single, which went pretty much unnoticed and failed to chart. On the 3rd of February 1967, the band's producer Joe Meek, committed suicide at his flat after an altercation with his landlady, who also died. After this, the Honeycombs had no more records issued, and the band broke up. Honey Lantry, left the music business to raise her two kids. The Honeycombs reformed in the early 90s, and were active for a few years mostly playing the revival circuit. Honey Lantry died on 23 December 2018, at the age of 75. Lantry's pioneering role as a female drummer was an inspiration to women in rock, and she paved the way for many female musicians who came later. And of course, her drums still sound as good today, as they did in the 60s.